Forest activist and conservationist Dylan Pugh has recently been to visit the fire-affected forests in his region of northeast New South Wales. I asked him if there was anything that could be done to repair or help the forests, what was their greatest need, and this was his reply. The, what these fires are really is the realisation of climate change uh, in, <coughs> in uh, Australia, in, in New South Wales, in particular well, the east coast of Australia, in, in our forests. You know, it's, uh, we've had these ongoing problems for a long time where our ecosystems are under stress. The, the repeated uh, droughts and heat waves have stressed the surviving trees and we're losing lots of them uh, just from uh, the droughts. And these fires are a manifestation of the next stage of climate change, which is a bit like coral bleaching in our coral reefs, where uh, we're getting these vast areas of forests uh, uh, sickening and dying. Now, our, most of our eucalypt forests will recover, but, but there's this attrition going on where we're losing the, the big old trees in particular. Uh, and and, and it, we're, we're creating uh, a, a, a more frequent fire regime each fire uh, uh, generates regrowth that encourages the next fire that comes along. And if this starts happening on too, too, uh, too frequently, then it's a, a, a downhill spiral. So we need to reappraise our relationship with our, with our forest and our native vegetation. It's, uh, it's absolutely essential for our well-being that we have our forests. They, apart from anything else, they, they change the, the uh, weather around them. They, uh, 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 through transpiration, they put moisture into the atmosphere and they create a lot of our rainfall. Through uh, the big old trees that um, allow the, the rainfall that's incepted to, uh, to, to flow through to our, to our streams, like when you convert to regrowth, a lot of that water is just, just pumped out into the air and it's not allowed to uh, replenish our stream. So we need our forests to maintain our, maintain our streams particularly during dry periods, because they're, they're like sponges, they hold that water and slowly release it over time. Um, and uh, through the process of transpiration, they take uh, hot air from the land surface and take it into the atmosphere and disperse it up there. So they, they actually cool the environment around them. So uh, our forests are a really important part of our, our, our weather system, our climate system. Um, Without them, we dry out the landscape and, uh, and we heat up the landscape. And that's what climate change is doing. So we're accentuating that through our land clearing activities and our logging activities. So we need to um, uh, realise that forests are essential for our future and they're essential to mitigate the worst impacts of climate change. They take up about a third of our, uh, on a, uh, a world basis, about a third of our carbon emissions. So of all that carbon we're releasing into the atmosphere, forests are what are saving us from, uh, in part, forests are what are saving us from uh, runaway climate change. If those forests stop performing that function of taking up and absorbing carbon, uh, we're in big trouble. I, I just, I don't see any way we can um, survive the, uh, uh, the impacts of climate change. We can talk about renewable energy, we can talk about all these other mechanisms of generating power, but we need to start removing that uh, carbon from the atmosphere. And it's been identified that, that forests are basically a third of the solution to, to climate change. They can take up a third of our carbon emissions and we need them to do it. And it's important to recognise that people talk, well, let's go plant trees, you know. They don't take in carbon as much as uh, natural forests. The older uh, a, a tree gets, the more carbon it takes, takes in. Our old growth forests are our best carbon storages. So they take in the carbon and they store it in those forests. And uh, through logging, we've reduced the carbon storage capacity of our forest by at least half. Uh, through land clearing, we, re we remove most of it. We, we're not left as much for the soil then also loses its carbon as well. Um, so we need our forests to uh, to mitigate climate change. That means we've got to stop logging them, we've got to stop clearing them. They're the first things we need to do. We can do them tomorrow. It's not, it's no, it's not hard. You know, we get most of our timber now from plantations, so we can continue that trend, though we did lose a lot of plantations this last year in fires. Um, but, but we can get our timber from plantations. We don't need to log our native forests. 
the far more valuable uh, to us as carbon storages. If we just stop logging uh, now, uh, our, just the regrowth of our forests, we've, we've, we've degraded them severely, we've reduced their carbon storages. If we just let them go now, they'll start taking back up that carbon they've lost and we'll store more and more carbon as they age. So um, uh, number one, let's protect what we've got left. Let's look after our remaining native forests. Let's uh, allow them to um, uh, reabsorb the carbon that they've lost to, to increase their carbon carrying capacity, both in the trees and in the soils. They're very good at sequestering carbon into the soils. Um, that really is the most important thing we can do. We, we then have uh, this problem about degrading forests. We, we have um, uh, uh, forest dieback spreading throughout, throughout our forests. In, uh, uh, w just west of here, uh, west of Kyogre, we have some of the worst forest dieback in New South Wales. They call it Belmyra associated dieback, but basically it's because we've opened up the canopy, we allow all the extra sunlight in, and that uh, promotes the growth of lantana. So lantana is an introduced weed, and it just goes crazy and takes over the understory. So it dis displaces all those native species, in particular in our wet sclerophyll forests, all, that, all those rainforest species used to grow in the understory, displaces them, takes them over, drags them down, it just, it just grows over everything. It's just horrible, really. Um, and uh, then it, uh, uh, our native species, um, uh, bell miners, love the new habitat they cre we, we, we create through that. And uh, they, they move in and they take over the forest, over vast waves of forest, and they exclude most other native species. They're very aggressive, they mob other species in there. So most other native species are eliminated from those forests, except for uh, a little sap-sucking insect called a psyllid that grows on the eucalypt leaves. And it just goes ballistic. They, uh, there's some, that they call it farming, I don't know if that's quite the right word, but uh, basically the psyllid populations explode where the bell miners take over the forest. Uh, and those, those psyllids then drain the life out of the eucalypts, basically suck the life out of them. And uh, there's probably about 100,000 hectares of bell miners associated, associated dieback in North East New South Wales alone. And it extends from southern Queensland down to Victoria. These vast waves of forests are dying. And, and what, uh, what happens is up here, we get this dense lantana understory with these sick eucalypts sticking above them. They stop seeding, they stop fruiting, um, and they just gradually die. It can take decades for these trees to die, but in the meantime, they're not reproducing. And uh, uh, that, that's frightening in itself, and that is ecosystem collapse that's occurring on a major scale. Uh, and then we have, um, on top of, you know, we've got drought-induced dieback going on as well in a lot of our forests. Uh, they're just not coping with this, with these uh, heat waves and drying conditions, and that affects our wildlife directly. Um, so, one thing, uh, uh, and, uh, our rainforests, particularly out in the drier country, particularly affected by lantana, too, moving in on the edges. So every time there's a fire, the lantana moves in further into the rainforest and takes it over. So we've got these rainforests contracting as lantana expands around their edges. Um, so one of the most important things we can do is restore the health of our forests to make them more resilient to both climate change and to fires. And, the, and one of the most important things we can do is remove the lantana. We've got to start controlling that lantana, get it out of the landscape, or get it reduced in the landscape so it's not such a problem. And that will, will help uh, restore our rainforest, because the worry at the moment is with um, 160 odd thousand hectares burnt, a lot of that's going to be taken over by lantana. If we get in there, get that lantana out, stop it taking over those rainforests, they have a chance. If we get out of the, 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 the eucalypt forest, then they too can recover and, uh, and, and stop being uh, converted into Belminer dieback uh, deserts. Um, so we need active intervention to, to save our forests. The short-term stuff we can do, I, I was very disappointed with um, uh, the koalas that I was working on down in Sandy Creek was that uh, no one came in to help them. I couldn't believe it. You know, we gave the government the evidence. Those koalas uh, were under immense stress because of the fires, because the, you know, the fire went through, the eucalypts dropped most of their leaves, the few that survived weren't getting new shoots, so the, the, the remaining leaves were very dry. The most important thing we could have done then was get water into the landscape for those, for not just the koalas, but the, the other species that survived the fires, uh, because 
koalas rely upon getting most of their moisture from leaves, uh, eucalypt leaves, but uh, if those eucalypt leaves are dry, basically they become dehydrated and uh, at the moment we're losing koalas from most of the tableland country because of repeated droughts and uh, heat waves and uh, uh, there's no free water for them to drink because of the drought and, and, and they're just they're disappearing like places like the Pilliga used to be one of their major strongholds in New South Wales they've virtually disappeared from there now so they're disappearing from the inland areas our coastal forests are really important for them but in these extreme conditions that we're creating through climate change uh, we need to help them and one of the ways we can help them is to put water out for them. Uh, uh, it's the most direct and easy way of providing assistance is, and, and helping them survive uh, these calamities in the future.